let's check out this grill. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is Greenhorn Barbecue Beer. My name is Todd. Sassy Kitchen Queen is over there doing gardening. Say hi, baby. Hi. Alright, she's uh, cooking some herbs and chilies for us. So what we got here is a little charcoal grill that you guys have probably seen in some of your hardware stores, maybe even grocery stores, depending on where you're shopping. It's called the Walkabout 2.0 mostly made in America because there are some parts that they've sourced overseas. I'm not sure which ones they are. And then I guess they assemble them mostly here in the United States and then they sell them. They cost right around $50 and really looking past some of its faults like no thermometer and the fact they don't recommend more than three pounds of charcoal on there at any one time and maybe some sketchy uh, rivets here and there. I think it's a really good bargain. Now one of the really neat features about this grill is that it comes completely assembled. You literally can carry it like a suitcase right out of the store, which is exactly what I did prior to going on a camping trip a few weeks ago. We were really excited to take this with us up to the Sierras camping, but when we got there we realized there was a ban on charcoal grills. So we ended up having to use our Traeger, which is not a bad option, but we really wanted to use some charcoal. So it went all the way to the Sierras with us and right back here and uh, got a few scratches here and there from, from uh, putting in the truck. But, you know, at less than 50 pounds, I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome little grill to just carry around. So what we wanted to do is cook some steaks later on tonight on it. But just like any new grill, it's probably a good idea to give it a, uh, a uh, initial burn in, which is exactly what we're going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate here. The, the really basic principle of setup here. So it's got, of course, these folding legs. And you'll see here, there's a little latch on the bottom. Just comes undone like that. Then you fold it out. And then there's a little tab on here that just goes in there. Kind of a little catch mechanism. Voila, there you go. Now, right off the bat, you might say, man, this, this thing's made for uh, people that are height challenged. Well, these legs fold out like that and they got these little spring buttons here just like uh, some easy ups do or other things that uh, fold out. And um, since it's so lightweight, it's easy to just push that in and get them to extend. It's really, it's really that easy. Plastic tipped feet that are kind of angled so it can fit on uh, flat surfaces. And there you go. You know, very first impression, you know, it's kind of flimsy, but you know, I've had Weber's that are a little flimsy, so I'm not gonna really uh, worry about it too much. It's got little sliding air vent right here, and this is where the sketchy rivet part comes into play. Um, I think, you know, if I kept this thing very long, I'd probably replace it with a screw, but uh, that's just me. Um, there's a few other screw holes here that I'm, I can't really explain uh, what they're for. Um, they don't appear to have anything here that would fit here. Um, now on the other side, there's some holes that are left wide open. Uh, can't really do anything about that. And then of course, on the top, you have a, almost a Weber-ish style air vent right there. Um, again, no provisions for any kind of thermometer. So I think, you know, in the future, I'll probably stick a little thermometer in there, a little ch tell true thermometer, probably be uh, about the cost of this whole grill for one of those tell trues. So let's get started. So as a side-by-side -side comparison, I pulled out my Weber 22 inch performer here. Okay, this is a performer kettle. So it's a little, it's a little bit higher than, than maybe the, uh, one of the little tri stand ones. Uh, but uh, gives you a good kind of comparison of the size. So, but when you look at it, interestingly enough, I'm gonna show you the cooking surface. So that cooking surface is probably about 27 to 28 inches off the ground. 
and the Weber definitely much higher, significantly higher. That's probably more of in the 32 inch range right there. So you're probably going to be a little bit more comfortable with the Weber. Obviously the smoking area, you know, I don't know how many square inches this is. I know it's in the instructions, but if you kind of get a, just a general look at it, you can see it's not bad. So square, the cooking surface is about 19 inches square. The Weber, round Weber, of course, is 22. Now this is square, this is round. So if you think about it, it's almost the same area. So I'm not gonna really complain about that. Now one of the things inside this Aussie walkabout is the charcoal tray. Looks like it possibly could be some galvanized kind of metal. So that's another reason why we're gonna burn it in first and burn off any galva, galva, galvanic kind of chemicals. Let me give you a closer look at this charcoal plate. Okay, so this charcoal plate has a few little brackets here. So you can adjust the height that looks like about an inch either way, maybe an inch and a half total or so. Um, and you know, it's a, looks like a chrome plated uh, thin gauge steel wire kind of thing here. I would definitely call it light duty. Um, now here's the uh, charcoal tray. Now kind of looks like an egg crate. A lot of people might think, well, do we put the charcoal on the whole side where there's divots or where there's actually dents that come out? Well, according to their user's guide, this is the side you want to use where you have the raised little bumps here. And according to Aussie, they are supposed to allow better airflow with the charcoal. Now, again, I found these holes here but there's no real way of securing this in. It just, it just sits here like this. Um, I'm not sure, you know, there's some dents here, a couple holes here. I'm not sure if there was ever, ever any provision to secure this any better, but I think this is what we're stuck with. So let's go with that. Now, like I mentioned, I'm gonna go with this front closed because in the rear, you got these three, uh, if you could barely see them here, let me move the lid there a little bit. You can see them back there. They're permanently open, okay? So I'm gonna go with the uh, front ones uh, closed. And of course, in Weber fashion, I'm just gonna kinda do my best to regulate the temperature using this top one here. We'll see how that works out. So that Aussie Walkabout 2.0 did a pretty decent job grilling those steaks. You know, those grill grates just happened to fit. And um, so I took advantage of that. Couldn't get them up much past 500 degrees though. I think that's just because the, what they call the cooking grid is a little high. So I guess if you can get that cooking grate down a little bit closer to the coals, you can probably achieve well over 500 degrees on that. Other than that, 
Uh, I think it was perfectly fine. Cooked up the steaks good enough for us. Those are some prime New York strip steaks that uh, Sassy Kitchen Queen picked up at Costco, and I think they're going to be just fine. So we're going to eat. So, folks, thanks for watching. And if you could, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification setting so you don't miss a thing. Cheers.